See what happens when we give physics professors a sense of humor? My goodness. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Hayden. Our uh, third and final speaker on the panel is uh, Don Easterbrook. Uh, Don Easterbrook is Professor Emeritus of Geology at Western Washington University. He has written three textbooks and a dozen other books, published more than 185 papers in professional journals, and presented 30 research papers at international meetings in 15 countries. Dr. Easterbrook has been president of the Quaternary Geological and Geomorphology Div Division of, of the Geological Society of America. Tongue twister for me there. Chairman of the 1977 National Geological Society of America meeting, U.S. Representative to the United Nations International Geological Correlation Program, Associate Editor of the Geological Society of America Bulletin, and Associate Editor for the Geomorphology International Journal, Dr. Don Easterbrook. Thank you. Uh, the title of what I'm going to talk about today is, Are Forecasts of a 20-Year Cooling Trend Credible? And what I will tell you is the answer is definitely yes, and that is based on uh, solid scientific evidence, which includes um, data from the categories that you see on the screen here, including ice core, isotope data, uh, decadal sea surface temperature changes, glacial fluctuations, solar variation, and uh, historic measurements. And the key to the whole talk is that the past is the key to the future and allows us, if we understand what has happened in the past, to make projections into the future. However, in a recent New York Times editorial, James Hansen has projected that sea levels will be at least 50 feet higher, uh, the ice sheets are going to uh, disintegrate out of control, and all manner of uh, terrible things are in store for us as a result of, uh, of global warming. There will be uh, large-scale drowning of cities and uh, dust bowls and, and intolerable temperatures. So this is somewhat similar to what the IPCC has been warning us about for some time. In fact, the IPCC predicted in the year 2000 that we would experience a one-degree increase in temperature between the year 2000 and 2010. It so happens that I also made a prediction in the year 2000, and in the year 2000, I published the following statements. Global warming is over. The current warm cycle should end in the next few years, and global warming should abate rather than increase in the coming decades. And the current warm cycle should end soon, and global temperatures uh, should cool. So we have two rather different predictions for what's in store for us. So what I hope to do today is to show you what those differences are. Uh, we'll talk a bit about what is happening now. Is the climate warming or is it cooling at the present time? Uh, how have climates changed in the past and what can we learn from that? What's the basis for predicting, predicting future climate and what's in store for the next 25 years? So let's start with where we've been over the past 15 years. This is a, a temperature. Uh, graph, the green line is uh, t t the temperature anomaly over the past 15 years back to about uh, 1988. And as you can see, there was a dip after uh, 1999, and it flattened out and now has taken a curve downward uh, in about the last uh, couple of years. It doesn't really matter which of the various means you measure uh, global temperature. Uh, the first two, the blue and, and the black, are satellite-derived uh, temperatures. The last three, uh, the, the red, the, the, the pink, and the green, are all surface temperature measurements. And they all follow pretty much the, the same pattern, showing us the temperature trend is actually down. If you do a trend analysis, uh, what you'll see is that the trend of temperatures for the past decade during that predicted period of 2000 to 2010, the temperature has, in fact, cooled. Looking at winter temperatures in, in the U.S., this is a graph. Uh, they got from Joe DeLeo, and in the northern tier um, states, you'll see that there's been about an eight degree cooling of winter temperatures in that part of the country and in the, in the south central, about three to five degrees of cooling of, of winter temperatures, and the coastal areas uh, anywhere from um, one to two degrees of cooling. There's no evidence of global warming here in the winter temperatures over the past decade. So, how do we go about predicting climate? 
the way the IPC, uh, CC does it, and, uh, and others, is by use of computer models. And so we now have a 10-year period where they have made a prediction, and we have the actual temperature, so uh, we can uh, compare the two. And the upper curve right here is a curve that I took from the IPCC website in the year 2000. It's as it appeared uh, at that time with no change. And the uh, lower curve here, the, the green curve, uh, is the measured temperature. So we can compare what actually happened to what the IPCC predicted. And as you'll see, uh, at the, red, the vertical red line shows the difference. And they, were, they missed it by more than one degree over that 10-year uh, period of prediction. So let's look at, at the uh, possibility for looking at real physical evidence to see what has happened in the past and how we can use that as a predictive tool, hopefully with better accuracy than achieved by the modeling. In order to predict where we're heading, we need to know where we've been. And the past is really the key to the future. If we can determine that there are repeating cyclical patterns in the past and that we are in uh, the right track, then we can perhaps have a chance of, of seeing where we're headed. So in measuring warming and cooling in a geologic past, there are lots of ways we can do that. I'm going to talk about four of them, historic temperature measurements, oxygen isotope ratios, advanced and retreat of glaciers, and measurement of ocean temperatures. The data that I'll be talking about today can be found in a uh, recent publication by Elsevier called Evidence-Based Climate Science. Uh, this is a book that has uh, a 15 papers in it by a variety of authors. There's a table of contents on the, on the handout in front of you. Uh, I edited the volume, and if any of you want to see any of the data that I present today, uh, you can either find it there or you can just email me and I'd be happy to send you a reprint. So where have we been uh, during the, the, the past century? We have a period of warming and cooling uh, several periods of warming and cooling. We have actually three periods of global cooling and two periods of global warming uh, during the past century. Uh, these are, are well documented. Uh, the period from 1880 to 1915 was a period of cooling when most of the uh, low temperature records were set uh, in, um, in North America. 1950 to 1945 was a warm period, 45 to 77 a cool period, 77 to 99 was the most recent warm period. And in 1999, the temperature turned cool. We can look at Greenland ice cores, and uh, we see something rather amazing. We, we can use this as a paleo thermometer, if you like, to see what's happened in the past. And I'm not going to go through the, uh, the, the process here, but the bottom line is that we can get a really good record of ancient temperatures going back thousands of years from the isotope ratio in the ice cores. And here's a particularly important one. Uh, what I've done here is I've calculated the temperature change based on isotope ratios uh, for about the last 500 years. The, the blue areas that you see, the, the downward trends here, are times of, of cooling. Uh, the red ones are times of warming. And as you can see, there's a fairly regular oscillation between warming and cooling. The interesting thing, and the part that I'd like you to remember about this graph, is that the vertical blue lines at the bottom uh, are the spacings of the intervals. In other words, the, each blue line is the bottom of, of one of the, the blue dips in the temperature. The spacing of those um, times of, of cooling averages 27 years. So I want you to remember one number, and that number is that we have periods of warming and cooling every, on the average, 27 years, say roughly, um, 25 to, to 30 years for the past 500 years uh, on a regular recurring pattern. If you look at the past 5,000 years, there also is a lot of oscillation. Um, here on this curve, uh, you see the little ice age shows up very nicely. Medieval warm period shows up nicely, warmer than present, uh, and so on. Uh, again, oscillation back and forth between warm and cold periods. Uh, just to note in passing that there is a very good record uh, of the Little Ice Age, the medieval warm period, uh, using the Greenland ice cores and also using various other kinds of, of uh, measuring devices. And when you look at the hockey stick and compare it to these, 
it makes you wonder why we should accept that a couple of, of uh, tree ring uh, studies should trump 3,000 publications, including many books that affirm the data that are responsible for uh, the uh, determination of the Little Ice Age and the medieval warm period. You see evidence of this on virtually every alpine glacier in the world. Uh, here is just one example. Uh, this happens to be uh, Mount Baker in the North Cascades. Here's the present ice margin. Here's where the ice margin was during the Little Ice Age about uh, 15, 1,600 years ago. And um, so we have good, uh, good control there. Something that most people don't realize is about 90% of the past 10,000 years, uh, the climates were warmer than, uh, they, uh, than they are right now. And what we see now is, is actually nothing new. 90% of 10,000 years have been warmer than present. And I'm going to skip through these in the interest of getting to the really um, interesting stuff. In 1977, there was a change in the Pacific Ocean uh, from its cool mode to its warm mode. We'd had global cooling for 30 years before that. And uh, in the space of one year, the ocean flipped from cool mode to warm mode and initiated the current period of global warming, which lasted from 1978 to 1998. Uh, glaciers expanded uh, and retreated uh, in concert with the uh, change in, in ocean temperatures. And this shows up uh, as sea surface temperature variations that match exactly what's called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, or the PDO, which is a, a decadal oscillation of, of temperatures. And the way this works is, and, and the basis for the climate change, is that during a, a cold mode, uh, the water off the coast of North America is cold, and off uh, the coast during a warm period, uh, you see the red color here indicating that it's warm, and it flips back and forth between these two modes. In 1997, uh, we were in a warm mode, and the water off the coast, the PDO, was warm. In 1999, it flipped to cool. And since then, we've had global cooling, and we've had uh, cold temperatures in the Pacific Ocean off the coast. Present time, it's still there. This is the cold water of the PDO. We've been stuck in a cold PDA mode uh, for about 10 years now. So what does this mean? It means that we can use the PDO to predict the temperature. Every time that the PDO has flipped from one mode to another, it stayed there for 25 to 30 years. Using that, we can make a prediction then that the uh, temperature is likely to uh, be cooler since we're stuck in a mode, a cold mode for the, apparently the next two decades. And here are four possible variations for scenarios of, of that cooling. One is that, this is a, a chart that I uh, first made in, in the year 2000 when I predicted global cooling. There are three scenarios noted here. Um, the most important ones for the possibilities for where we're headed in the future are we might have something similar to the 1945 to 77 cooling, which is fairly modest. 1880 to 1915 is more severe. The Dalton, which seems to be where the sun is heading, uh, was even more severe cold, and uh, of course the bedded maunder uh, is a very, very uh, severe uh, cooling of, of the climate. So I'm going to skip through the solar things here and um, look at conclusions. Uh, we've had many periods of, of natural warming and cooling in the past 15,000 years, long before CO2 could have had any effect. We have more than 40 periods of global warming and cooling on a regular basis with a, with a spacing of about 25 to 30 years, which has continued to the present time. And, we've, and every time we have flipped from a, uh, a warm PDO to a cold PDO, we have had a climate change for the next 30 years, depending on whether the temperature has changed from warm to cold in the ocean. We just flipped to the cold mode in 1999. We've been there ever since. And so the basis for my prediction of global cooling for the next two decades is based that we'll stay in that mode, and there's every indication uh, that uh, we're, we're going to do that. So the sun is also playing a role in all of this, and the sun is doing some remarkable things that we've already heard in, in a previous paper. So what I'm um, going to conclude then is that not only is the prediction of cooling in the decades ahead based on solid scientific data, but the data indicates that it's almost a vir virtual certainty. There's never been a time when the PDO has been wrong. When the PDO has been in a warm or a cold mode, it has stayed stuck there for at least uh, two to three decades. And we have been stuck in this cold mode 
uh, for the last decade, and we have two more to go before we get out of it. The main question is not whether or not we're going to have global cooling ahead, but how intense is it going to be? Are we going to have a modest cooling like we had uh, in the 60s and 70s? Are we going to have something deeper uh, like we had uh, during the, the Dalton minimum, uh, which occurred in about 1800, the cause of Napoleon's demise in Russia? Or are we going to have something even worse than that, which might be the monitor? And the answer to those questions, we don't know. Time will tell. But it seems a virtual certainty that global cooling is ahead. So don't throw away your parkas yet. Thank you.